Hello there everyone, welcome back to another video about a children's trading card game. Today is a new children's trading card game as Vanguard continues to disappoint me and make me regret investing any money into it whatsoever. I have decided to look elsewhere. Gate Ruler remains my number one priority, but recently Aniplex announced a brand new game called Build Divide and this seemed fairly interesting uh, in sort of premise. It looked like a mix between uh, Duel Masters and Buddy Fight um, and it seemed fairly interesting, so I thought, okay, I'm going to give the game a look, and today they have dropped the rules, as well as, I think, a lot of card reveals and such, so I actually, as the time of this recording, I don't know why I'm holding these things, uh, haven't read them yet, so you're going to get a live reaction to the rules and my impressions, um, is this going to be an exciting video? I hope so, but I also have no idea, because again, I haven't read it. Uh, but I have been told that the game is very, very Duel Masters, so let's go ahead and get started. I'm here uh, on the page, and let's let's get reading. So, uh, how to play? Well, let's try and zoom that in so you guys can see it decently. There we go. Okay. So, win condition. Deal damage to your opponent uh, when your opponent has no cards in life zone, or your opponent draws a card when your opponent does not have cards in deck and life zone. Um, okay. Deck and life... Okay, I'm sure that'll be explained. Um, maybe you draw cards from life? It's weird. Okay, uh, card introduction, right. So there are units. Uh, the number one is uh, you the cost you pay for it. That's the top left-hand corner number. Two is the card name. Three is the play timing, interesting. Uh, four is the power, uh, sure, the number. Five is no idea. That is, are these bigger? Are these images bigger? Okay, they are fine, right, <laughs> sorry. Uh, I probably should have, like, checked that, but, um, yeah, I had no way of knowing. Right, there we go. Uh, that should probably be more legible. Uh, f five is the hit. Uh, I imagine that's strike or critical or such. Uh, six is the title, uh, traits, maybe. Uh, seven is the trigger. Um, eight is the flavor text. Nine is the card type. And ten is the attribute. I notice it doesn't seem to mention anything about the effects. Cool, okay. Um, then there are territory cards, which seem to be the main sort of draw. Um, these are two-sided cards that will change the tide by opening. A card that will unleash its true power by meeting the conditions, and it's separate from your deck. Uh, this is sort of the big thing that I'm very interested in about in the game for. And then command. Cards with a one-time use effect. Power up your units or do damage to your opponent. Use them to get advantage. So these seem like spells, maybe, or something like that. Okay, fine. Uh, simple enough to understand. I think the... Uh, oh, okay, wait. So let's let's just discuss this card framing and such. I think it looks nice. I think it's it's a little it's a little all over the place. It's a little you know there's, 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 it's dense. I wouldn't say all over the place. It's very dense, but I don't think that's a bad thing. Um, and I think it's just one of those things that once I get used to it, it'll be fine. So I think uh, from a art perspective, and that says it's fine. I'm not a really big fan of the art. I think um, it's very generic at the moment. Like it doesn't really stand. Like it's fine. Like you know, it's completely unoffensive, but also completely uninspired at the moment. I'm I'm sure it'll get better in time. But let's let's keep going. Deck building rules. So, each deck consists of 40 to 50 cards. You can only have up to four copies of cards with the same name. You pair one territory card separate from your deck. You must have 12 buster cards in your deck, that's with the skull icon. And you can have up to 12 shot cards in your deck with the star icon. Okay, interesting. Um, game preparation. So, uh, number one, shuffle and place your deck on the deck area. Sure, uh, place your territory uh, on the character side. Side who goes first with rock, paper, scissors. That better not be the official rule. Draw five. You may mulligan. Okay, you can mulligan. Interesting. Place. Oh, okay. So you draw before mu you draw, you mulligan, and then you place life. I really do like that. Um, so you place uh, top five into yellow and then top five into red. This is the life zone. Put two cards from the top of your deck onto energy and face up. Okay, so it has mana, I guess. Uh, and the mulligan, you put the... Uh, okay, so it's it's just a mulligan. It's not, like a, it's not like a specific mulligan. I'm not sure the technical term. It's just a put the whole thing back and redraw five. Okay, I mean, that's that seems fine. Uh, and it's going to be five different ones because you don't shuffle before you draw the five. So, okay, all right. I think that's fine. Uh, turn flow. We have stand phase, draw phase, main phase, attack phase, end phase. Okay, no main phase two. Is that sort of, I suppose, the main thing there? Sure. Um, stand phase. What have we got? 
Uh, put all your cards in rest to stand during this phase. Cards that have already performed an action are put into rest, and by putting them to rest they may perform actions again. Uh, okay, I, I think I'm overthinking that, sure. Draw phase, uh, draw one. First player does not draw. If there are no cards left in deck, you draw from the top of your life. Okay, and if you can't draw from life, yep, okay, cool, fine, makes sense. Short, sure. uh, main phase, what do we do in the main phase? You may perform two actions, setting energy. Place one energy from your hand, okay. So this is exactly like Dragon Ball Super, um, like Zen and Zard, similar to Zen and Zard, um, yeah. Uh, although that was doing a separate anyway, uh, playing you may play a card by paying the cost, uh, and the cost is simply mana. Sure, the total play cost. Uh, okay, and then there's a specific energy color, um, which is the number two. So this would be black, and then the non-specific is just this uh, yellow. Fine. Okay, I understand. Sure. Um, okay, then there's play timings. Let's see. I like that this is in English, actually. They've already put this in English here, so I suppose that kind of confirms an English version. Uh, you may only... Normal is only during your turn. Quick, you may play this during your opponent's turn by cutting in when your opponent plays a card, etc. Okay, so there will be some sort of stack uh, or gate processes or chains or whatever. We'll decide. We'll see what, sh what the specifics is, the, what the specifics are. Attack phase, you attack, you rest. Uh, you may attack an opponent's rested unit or an opponent's player. Fine, that's very standard of other games. Block. Defending player may block by resting a standing unit when your opponent attacks. Okay, so there are blockers in this game. Fine, makes sense. Um, okay. Uh, then there's battle. Uh, when the attacker attacks a rested unit or when the defending player blocks, a battle occurs. Pa uh, power damage will be dealt to participating parties. Fine, so they deal the power to each other. Um... Okay, so it was dealt 2,000 damage, but its power is 6,000, so it survives, and this receives, uh, it's only got 2,000, so this dies. Fine, that makes sense. Uh, if an attack is successfully dealt to the player, then they uh, damage up the player is, uh, by the hit. You flip the card of your lifestone and put it into your cemetery. Okay, I believe in Jewel Masters you draw your shields. So, okay, so it goes into the cemetery. If you don't have any cards to flip, use the game. You trigger check any cards that are placed into the cemetery, so you've got 10 trigger checks, essentially. If there is an overflow of damage, go back to step one. Okay, that's a weird way of saying, I think, just do it one at a time, basically. Fine, sure. Okay, simple enough so far. Uh, trigger check, right? Uh, check the top right hand of the corner of the card placed in the cemetery. Bust a trigger, deal one extra damage. R okay, so I have to play 12 cards that deal me an extra damage. What? Okay. I mean, these would have to be very good. Like, this is kind of like in Gate Ruler, like how you have like cards like Tatarija, um, or like, you know, the, or like uh, Disaster, which like are negative when damage checked, but like give you other benefits. So I suppose, but you have to play 12? Okay. And then Shot Triggers is just, um, a trigger that will help the defending player, fine. So that's like the normal trigger. So you can have 12 of those and then 12 buster triggers, but you have to play 12 buster triggers. That's very weird. I don't like that. Okay. Remove all of the effects during his turn, damage up to all units. Okay, so everything heals up. At the end of his turn, play out six more cards. Five card hand? Okay. Once all the above has been resolved, the turn ends and continue the phases. Okay. I mean, there's some good stuff here, some standard stuff, like, but some really sus stuff. Uh, okay, all right, there's the territories. Um, obviously, that's the main thing here. Uh, there's more information, so, okay, territories. By playing your ace unit, you can open your territory. Um, you may open the territory if an ace unit with the corresponding title enters. So when you play it, you open the territory. And when your territory opens, your global effect uh, of your ace and buster comes into play. Fine. I'm sure we'll see more information on what those do. Territory open. Here we go. Opening cost. When a unit with the total cost lower than that territory's cost opens the territory, players have to pay the difference in cost. Okay. Interesting. Right. So it doesn't have to be a specific card necessarily. It just has to share some sort of trait. Okay. 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 I like that. I like that. Much easier to activate than you just have to see your ace card or whatever. I like that. Okay. Quick and chain. Players may command ability with quick. Uh, chain. On a chain, uh, resolve them from the effects play later. 
In the chain, plays a quick one, gives plus 2,000 power. Okay, this is just Yu-Gi-Oh chains. Fine. Okay, sure, simple enough. Fine. Uh, and then keywords, uh, decoy. Okay, that's just like a spe special form of blocker, blitz. Um, okay, that's like first strike, um, I think. Uh, judgment, because there's a judgment counter. Okay, fine. Scout, look at the same cards. Stop deck was written. Oh, that's scry. Put the top card, be back into the cemetery. If I just mill. And the territory icon, this ability only activate when territory is open. Okay, fine, right. So, okay. Impressions on the rules, and I suppose that's just cut back to me real quick. So, impressions on the rules. Overall, I think they're good. However, I really don't understand this buster icon thing. I think that's very, very weird. And I really, really dislike it. Um, I think the territories are very, very cool. Um, I think uh, the chain's fine. I like that. There's interaction in this game, which obviously makes me very happy. I like that. That's a very skill-based thing. I like the territories. Don't know how I feel necessarily about Yu-Gi-Oh! Chains, but um, yeah, I just think this... I, uh, okay, I, I'll need to see the cards, because if all the Buster cards are really good, or if the Buster cards say something like, you know, heal two, then you're going to be like, okay, fine, like, I don't give a shit if it's dealing me a damage, because it's healing me as well, so, like, you know what I mean? Like, it will depend. I, I just think we need to see, but fine, okay, sure. Um, yeah, right, well, there's also some product information, so I guess, you know, might as well make this a full first impressions video. Uh, no need to farm content that much. So we've got um, this starter deck, Witch, Laughing, and Jet Black, and I guess I'm just going to review the aces. I guess I'll go more in depth uh, when we get the full starter decks because I don't think we have them. We've got we've got like half of it, I think. But let's have a look. Okay, so each deck includes an ultra ace card, right? So let's have a look. What is this ace card? Seven Great Sins Greed. Auto. Uh, when you open this card, a territory at the start and at the start of your main phase, you may mill two. If you do, activate the following according to number of bursts from among them. Zero, pop a unit. One, put the top of your... Whoa. One, put the top card of your life into the cemetery. Two, destroy all your units that do not have... What the fuck? That seems really bad. <laughs> what? Okay. Um, that seems really bad. Um, what do you do? Soul Best in Bloom. A unit and ace. Total cost five. Two black, three colorless. 5,500. Uh, when this unit battles during the opponent's turn, mill one. If it's a, bus, a buster, this will get this will get big. Ten five is pretty big. Territory seven great sins agreed. Activate rest and all this unit. Mm, banish six. Choose and play a unit card without taboo and total cost lower than the energy from your cemetery. Okay, so this seems good, and I understand the mill strategy. I really don't like this card. Like, why am I losing my life or losing my own units if I get unlucky? And see bursts. What the fuck? Okay, I don't like that. Um, I'll do a more in-depth review, but my initial impression is this is the one I thought I might be more interested in, but I really hate it, so cool. And then uh, Beast King Raging in Bright Red. Let's have a look at your territory. Persistent Light. Oh, this is the ace. Oh, have they not shown the territory? Oh, they didn't even show the territory? Okay, fine. Well, I guess we'll have a look at this guy. Uh, so five, uh, six thousand power, pretty big. Uh, auto when this unit wins the battle, stand this unit. That's a very powerful ability. Uh, territory when um, king hundred beasts. Auto when this unit gets destroyed, you may pay one red, two colorless, to play it from your cemetery at the start of the next end phase. At the start of the next end phase. So that means if it happens during your opponent's turn, if you have the mana open, you just bring it back for your turn. This card seems very good, and also very control-based, which isn't, like, it seems more like mid like mid regi control um, than, you know, um, I might expect from red, which is usually a red launch is, like, very aggro-y. Okay, sure, then we've got set one, um, and you can see they've gone for a very specific vibe and target market. Um, okay. Uh, so this is 92 cards in the set, 6 new aces and territories, divide rare, boost and power force all, and the 2 star decks fine. So that's the same as gate ruler basically. Um, so some of the new ones. I like the design of Zofia, um, Claudia, whatever, uh, Elizabeth, yup, sure, uh, Wolfen, eh, 
Okay, the only one I really like is Zofia at the moment. Fine, okay, and this releases 8th October, so uh, Gate Ruler Hype is probably going to be taking most of my time then, but I will try and cover this uh, a little bit. Then we've got announcement for Booster 2. This will be crossing uh, Open Hostilities Crossing Fate, launching on 3rd December. Uh, so, two months or so. Um, so eight weeks, I think, uh, in between releases, which is fine. Um, so, yep, and then there's Rebecca, uh, Nasia, um, Vertiga, and Nola. Uh, they look fine. They just look really generic, like... Like, all of them are pretty generic. Like, the least generic-looking one, I feel like, is Zofia, but even that's pretty generic, and that's kind of my issue. Uh, I'll let you look at this. And there's a TIE booster with Madoka Magica launching in 2022. So there's going to be those. It's an Aniplex property, so I imagine we might get FGO and whatever and stuff eventually. But uh, overall impressions, the game looks fine. It's just, like, it doesn't... Gra like, with Gate Ruler, what interested me so much was the potential of the Ruler system. And whilst the first two sets really didn't live up to that, set three looks like it's hopefully going to be a turnaround and it's going to start, uh, you know... All the card reveals are looking really good. Overlord is very strong and there's buffing all the rulers. The time is recording everything. So I'm much more excited for that. Um, however, I will say this definitely looks like a much more interesting game than Vanguard, which is the other game I currently play. And as I have no interest in competitively playing Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh! or Magic, uh, I'll play like Commando and Magic. And I really am not enjoying Vanguard at the moment, and I'm probably going to quit. Um, this will probably be my backup game, my second game, just, uh, you know. So if you see it in the channel banner, don't be surprised. Um, but yeah. Overall, I would say 6 out of 10 on my impressions. Like, overall positive, but it's fine. Uh, there we go. Hope you guys enjoyed this video today. If you did like the video, let me know what you think about of Build Divide in the comments section down below. Um, there is a Discord server uh, and a Twitter account um, which is being very active, so uh, please do join those. Um, if I remember, I'll put a link in the, in the description. Uh, but there we go, that's it, and I will see you guys in the next one. Cheers.